When we talk about the German army in World War II, there is one unit that stands out above all the others. The Großdeutschland Division. This elite unit, belonging to the regular army, and not to the Waffen-SS, was always involved in the most difficult combats, having to face truly dramatic situations. Next, in this program, we are going to analyze the actions of the Großdeutschland Division throughout World War II, in which this elite German unit fought in the most decisive battles of the conflict. This famous formation had its origin in 1921, when a guard regiment was created in Berlin. Its initial tasks were to participate in ceremonial and representative events, although over time it evolved until in 1939, Hitler ordered the small unit to become the Großdeutschland Infantry Regiment. Unlike other German army regiments formed in specific regions, the Großdeutschland was made up of soldiers recruited throughout the country. The unit was officially activated on June 14, 1939, with a celebratory parade through the streets of Berlin. From here, the unit was involved in some of the most important battles of World War II. It was precisely in France, in 1940, where the regiment demonstrated its combat prowess under the command of Guderian, impressing its superiors with its skill and effectiveness in combat. During this campaign, the regiment was assigned to Army Group A, which was the one that had to cross the Ardennes to isolate a large part of the British and French troops in front of Dunkirk. Once they achieved this objective, this formation continued its attacks in the direction of the city of Lyon. It is estimated that their losses during this campaign were about 220 dead and 830 wounded, or in other words, between a third and a quarter of the unit. This is undoubtedly one of the drawbacks of always being at the forefront, and it is estimated that during the month and a half that the campaign lasted, said regiment traveled almost 7,000 kilometers. At the end of the French campaign, its members were highly decorated, and at least 400 soldiers of the Grobsdeutschland received some type of decoration, ranging from the second-class Iron Cross to the Knight's Cross. A year later, when Operation Barbarossa began, the Grossdeutschland Regiment was attached to the 2nd Panzer Group, which was later known as the 2nd Panzer Army, which was also led by Guderian. Formed within Army Group Center, the German regiment played a fundamental role in the rapid advances of the Wehrmacht, facing fierce Soviet resistance. Later, during the Battle of Moscow at the end of 1941, the regiment had to face its most difficult combat up to that time. After the fierce battle south of the Soviet capital, the regiment was so weakened and depleted that the decision had to be made to reorganize the unit with reinforcements arriving from Germany. Thus, a few months later, in April 1942, it was announced that the Großdeutschland Regiment would become a division. This transformation was a way of recognizing the unit's successes, and also a necessity in terms of the availability of new motorized divisions to face the summer campaign of 1942. Since it could not be sent to Germany to reorganize, the Großdeutschland unit was stationed near Oral. The change in the unit's status meant that the new Großdeutschland now had a greater number of armor, artillery, and cannons of all types. After reorganization, the Großdeutschland division was assigned to the 48th Panzer Corps. During the early phases of Operation Blue, as the Germans sought to push their way into the Caucasus, the division played a crucial role in the fierce battles to break through the formidable Soviet defenses. Little by little, the Großdeutschland was able to make its way through the Soviet lines until it was able to successfully cross the upper sector of the Don River, and was key in the capture of the city of Voronezh. In August, the division was sent to the north bank of the Donets, where it assumed the essential role of mobile reserve, to meet any Soviet threat against the left flank of the German penetration into the Caucasus. Shortly before Operation Uranus occurred, with which the Soviets surrounded the German 6th Army at Stalingrad, and annihilated several armies of Germany's allies, the Großdeutschland Division was sent to the Rezev salient. It was there, where in harsh winter conditions, it had to face numerous Soviet attacks, which tested the resistance of this division. After the start of the massive Mars operation, the elite German division had to fight tenaciously to hold its ground, suffering numerous casualties and once again being almost annihilated. In this way, the Grossdeutschland's fighting capacity was significantly diminished, 
but the division's remarkable fighting spirit persisted, and it continued to resist fiercely until it was finally withdrawn from the front to undergo much-needed reconditioning. In late February 1943, the highly esteemed Großdeutschland Division, along with the 48th Panzer Corps and the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, participated in the Third Battle of Kharkov. It was there that Manstein stopped the Soviet advance towards the Sea of Azov, with which they intended to surround most of Army Group South. With the fall of Kharkov, the battle-hardened division was once again withdrawn from the front to recover and recondition. In May 1943, the division underwent a significant upgrade, receiving armored personnel carriers and Tiger-type battle tanks. As a result, it was designated as the Panzergrenadier Division. Thus, after this new transformation, the Großdeutschland Division became the most powerful unit of the German army, with a total of about 20,000 troops and 232 armored vehicles, among which 15 Tigers and 81 Panzer IV stand out. In addition to these 232 armored vehicles, the almost 200 new Panthers that had just entered service were assigned to the elite German division. With them, the unit's armored force amounted to more than 400 battle tanks and tank destroyers of different types. During the Kursk offensive, Großdeutschland positioned itself on the left flank of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps and charged the formidable Soviet defenses on July 5. Despite having to face technical setbacks with their new Panther-type tanks, the division continued forward and managed to make its way towards Kursk. The Großdeutschland division was intended to lead the assault on the left flank of the German penetration in the south of the salient, breaking through the enemy defenses with its heavy firepower. However, most new Panther-type tanks faced serious technical problems, including engine fires and mechanical breakdowns, which left many of them unusable before even reaching the battlefield. Unfortunately for their Waffen-SS comrades, they could not participate in the famous armored battle of Prokhorovka, due to mechanical problems that affected their tanks throughout the battle, and to the stiff Soviet resistance in all sectors. This was a serious blow to the division's ability to fully utilize its potential. However, and despite the setbacks suffered, the skill and determination of the members of this division allowed them to claim the destruction of more than 260 enemy tanks, along with a considerable amount of other enemy military equipment and materials during the course of the battle. The division's performance in Operation Citadel cemented its reputation as an elite fighting force on the Eastern Front. However, after weeks of intense fighting, their resources and troops were depleted, leading to their eventual retreat to the German rear on July 18 to rest and regroup. The Großdeutschland division was then reassigned to the Hoth Group, regaining its crucial role as a mobile reserve. During this period, the Tiger Tank Company was significantly expanded, becoming a formidable 3-battalion Panzer Regiment. At the end of August, the division was transferred back to the 48th Panzer Corps, where it continued to be a very important asset in countering enemy offensives, with which their enemy tried to reach the Dnieper River. For the rest of 1943, and without the Germans being able to prevent it, the elite Wehrmacht unit was involved in a widespread retreat towards the west under relentless enemy pressure. By the end of that year, the division earned the well-deserved nickname of the Fire Department due to the numerous actions in which it intervened to plug enemy breaches. This title symbolized its reputation as a fast and highly reliable unit, which a and again he went to the most critical sectors of the front. At the beginning of January 1944, the Großdeutschland Division was positioned just to the rear of the bend in the Dnieper River, being prepared to go wherever the Soviets attacked. As part of their efforts to strengthen and modernize the division's units, a small contingent of the Großdeutschland was sent to France to rest and recondition, which allowed them to train with numerous Panther-type tanks, which in this period were very numerous. During the following months, Großdeutschland remained in constant motion, rushing from one critical sector to another, along the southern eastern front, addressing every possible emergency. One of the most difficult battles he had to face was the rescue from the Cherkasa siege, at the end of January 1944. On March 4 of that same year, the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Ukrainian fronts launched a massive attack against the left, central, and right flanks of Army Group South. In response to the increasing pressure, 
The Grossdeutschland was sent east to Yemen, reinforcing the weak parts of the line and repelling enemy advances. By the middle of that month, the division shifted its focus toward the Dniester River, strategically positioning itself to slow the Red Army's advance toward Romania. In April 1944, fierce fighting in their sector forced the division to retreat to present-day Moldova, where they continued fighting fiercely in the region for more than 60 days. On May 2, the troops of the Grossdeutschland once again showed their worth by stopping a powerful Soviet offensive that was heading towards Romania, where the vital oil wells were located that fed most of the German tanks and aircraft. After continuing to fight for weeks, at the end of July, the division was transferred to East Prussia, where they were involved in numerous battles that spread to the Baltic states. Again, each of these combats took their toll, and the division progressively weakened. Trying to hold a corridor near the city of Memel, the division suffered heavy losses, bringing the unit to the brink of demise. In a desperate attempt to evacuate as many soldiers and civilians as possible, thousands of people embarked on a dangerous journey to reach Memel, which was the only escape route from the Baltic states. As Soviet forces approached Memel, the situation became increasingly serious. In the end, despite the efforts of the German troops, the Memel bridgehead could not hold and many soldiers and civilians had no choice but to surrender, and were taken prisoner by the Russians. The ferocity of the Eastern Front took its toll on the Grossdeutschland, and its sacrifices in the defense of German territories were not without great costs. In March 1945, the division had only 4,000 troops, having a quarter of its ideal combat capacity. In the midst of the chaotic collapse of the Memel Bridgehead, some of these survivors managed to escape by ferry and were able to disembark further west on the Baltic coast, being immediately returned to combat. However, the fate of most of the division was sealed, and the battles around Pelot led to its complete destruction on April 25, 1945. Only a few hundred men from the division were able to reach the vicinity of Lübeck and surrender to the British forces, while the majority were left behind facing the terrible fate of surrendering to the Soviet forces. Many of these men endured an uncertain future, and most were confined to harsh concentration camps in Siberia. In the midst of the dramatic end of the war, a few remnants of the Grossdeutschland played a secondary role in the formation of the Kermark Panzer Grenadier Division, which continued to fight intensely during the final months of the war. Due to their origin, soldiers from the Brandenburg and Kermark units had the right to wear the prestigious Grossdeutschland insignia, which served as a symbol of their shared history and camaraderie within the ranks of the Wehrmacht. So, what do you think about this unit? Would you like to know more about it? I leave you in the description the program that we recently uploaded with Carlos Caballero Gerardo, in which we analyzed the actions of the Grossdeutschland in the Second World War, in a much more detailed way.